audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Today, Pastor Greg Laurie shows how the early church turned their world upside down with their commitment to the gospel. And we can too. What are you passionate about? Some people are passionate about sports. Other people are passionate about food. That's what fires them up. Other people, it's politics. Listen, it's fine to have an interest in all of these things, but make your primary passion about Jesus Christ. That's it. Don't lose that. This is the day when the lost are found. This is the day for a new beginning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Again, you hear all the angels are singing. This is the day, the day when life begins. Christianity is a worldwide faith. Some say over 31% are Christians the world over. Yet if you rewind history, Christianity began in a small geographic area on the other side of the globe with just a handful of followers. How in the world did they reach the world? Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie brings us some good insight from the book of Acts that'll help us encourage one another in the faith and reach our world in our time with the love of Christ. I heard a story about a genie that appeared to a woman. True story. (laughs) The genie said, whatever you want, I'll give to you, and I'll grant to you as many wishes as you want. Pretty good deal. So the woman replied, well, genie, my wish is that my husband's eyes should only be on me during all waking hours. The genie said, all right. What else do you want? She says, well, I don't want him to be concerned with anything else in life except me. In fact, she said, I don't even want him to sleep without me right by his side all the time. Okay, the genie says, what else? She said, "Uh, actually, I want him when he wakes up in the morning to see my face first. All right, anything else? Show one more thing. I don't want him to go anywhere without me. So genie said, Boom, you're a cell phone. (laughs) She was turned into a smartphone. It's funny, we call these things smartphones, right? I think they've actually made us more stupid. In many ways, I read an article in Inc. Magazine with this headline, We Lost, The Gadgets Won. And uh, among other things, the article points out that the average smartphone owner unlocks their phones 150 times a day. 85% of smartphone users check their phones while speaking with friends and family. Have you ever done that? that that's rude, by the way. You want someone saying, I just want to share this. It's so important. Yeah, yeah. And I just say, yeah, okay. Wait. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Wait. No, no, you're not listening. Put the phone down. We all have done that, haven't we? And I think... Not only have smartphones made us more stupid, they've made us relationally dumb. I think social media, in many ways, is making people anti-social. Because, you know, social media, back in the day, on Instagram might be pictures of what you had for breakfast, or you might see a random cat video, or, or other fun things, and now it's like people ranting ranting about whatever it is they're upset about. This is the problem. Social media is not very social at all. In fact, Americans have probably never been more disconnected. So what is the solution? Number one, we need God. And number two, we need each other. It's as simple as that. We need God and we need each other. God wired you that way. You're built for community. You're not meant to do life alone. In fact, the first thing that God said was not good was the aloneness of man. Back in the book of Genesis, it says Genesis 2.18, it is not good for man to be alone. Proverbs 27.17 reminds us, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says, two are better than one. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other up. 
I read an article from the Harvard Women's Health Watch, and I always read the Harvard Women's Health Watch. It's, <laughs> no, I just came across it. And it said, quote, dozens of studies have shown that people who have satisfying relationships with family, friends, and their community are happier, they have fewer health problems, and they live longer, end quote. And that's so true because God has wired us that way. And this is where the church comes in, you see? Because the church is an oasis of hope in a desert of hopelessness. And that is why every one of us needs to be a part of the church. So I bring this up because here in Acts 2, we're looking at the birth of the church. The church that Jesus started. The church that Jesus established. He only started one organization, if you will, when he walked our earth, and it was the church. By the way, the word church means called out ones. It's not about a building. It's not about a cathedral. The church is when God's people gather together. Because Jesus said, when two or more are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. The church is a place to find accountability. The church is a place to be spiritually fed. The church is a place to hear the word of God. The church is a place to discover and then use your spiritual gifts. And the church should be your family because we really are your family. So let's consider now the story here before us of what the early church looked like. The church that changed the world. The church that was accused of turning the world upside down. I'm reading from Acts chapter two, verses 42 to 47, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Just to get context, remember this is on the heels of the day of Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit has been poured out and 3,000 people have come to believe in Jesus after Simon Peter delivered the inaugural message of the church, Acts 2.42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, the breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as everyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. Thanks for joining us for A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California. Today, Pastor Greg is taking us back to the early days of the church. It was an exciting time, as Scripture says, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Let's continue. So what can we learn from this church? If you're taking notes, here's point number one. They were a learning church. They were a learning church. Now let me apply this to you personally. If you want to be a growing Christian, you need to be a learning Christian. There's always so much more to learn. I've been a Christian, well, pretty long now, over 50 years. And you know, you would think that I know a lot and I know some things, but I've discovered that I have so much still to learn. And then there's a problem as you get older with forgetting things you've learned, right? So it's a, it's a process of learning new things and being reminded of old things that maybe you have forgotten. And the Apostle Paul, after years of walking with the Lord, said, look, I, I am pressing on because I have not reached perfection. Pressing on toward the mark, and that should be the objective and the attitude of every follower of Jesus Christ. These people were studying the Word of God. The fact of the matter here in verse 42, when it says continued steadfastly, this speaks of passion. They were living in a first love relationship with Jesus and they had burning hearts. And let me ask you this, what are you passionate about? I mean, seriously, I know the default answer, Jesus, okay, maybe, we'll see. I'll go check out your social media and then I'll see what you're really passionate about. What do you post most about? What do you talk most about? Some people are passionate about sports. Sports. 
And I know a lot of, and there's nothing wrong with loving sports and enjoying sports, but is that your primary passion? Other people are passionate about movies, you know, or this new series on Netflix. Oh, have you seen this? Oh, you're gonna watch this, and you know, you'll be talking about whatever, but the moment that topic comes up, they get all fired up. Other people are passionate about food, food. Everything's food, you know? And that's what fires them up. Other people, it's politics. Man, they're not even interested in the conversation until you get to politics. Now they come to life. Listen, it's fine to have an interest in all of these things, but make your primary passion about Jesus Christ. That's it. Don't lose that. It's not that these other things are bad things, but if one of these things takes the place of Jesus and your passion is channeled in a different direction, it actually can be a bad thing. So these people listened. They listened to what the Word said. They continued with passion in the apostles' doctrine. And that's the way we should be as well. We must come with the desire to hear the Word. Number two. It was a loving church. So number one, they were a learning church. Number two, they were a loving church. Verse 42, they continued in fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers, and continued to do this together. Now, as we grow in our faith, we will want to do it with other believers, uh, gathering around the Word of God. And the Lord loves it when we talk about Him together. There's a fascinating little passage over in Malachi 3.16 that says, those that feared the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened and heard. The phrase listened and heard can be translated to prick the air. So it's you hear something and all of a sudden you tune into it. The idea is that God bends down to us not to miss a single word. So we're talking about whatever and suddenly someone says, you know the word of God or the Bible or Jesus, all of a sudden the Lord says, oh wait, What are you saying? I'm really interested in what you're saying. For instance, if I'm talking to an adult and one of my grandchildren comes up and says, Papa, I hear that. And I'm gonna tune out whatever is happening around me and put my attention toward one of my grandchildren. God likes it when we talk about him together. Fellowship is praying together. Fellowship is serving together. Fellowship is suffering together. Fellowship is being blessed together. Fellowship is serving together. In fact, the stronger your vertical fellowship, the stronger your horizontal fellowship will be. By vertical, I mean the closer you are to God, the closer you'll be with God's people. And if you're not as close to God as you need to be, you'll probably want to spend less time around godly people. So this is something that is so important. Now I know sometimes people say, well, I don't know the church, you know. It's so full of hypocrites. Hey, there's always room for one more, so come join us. (laughs) You've heard me and others say many times, uh, don't try to find the perfect church because when you find it, you'll ruin it, right? (laughs) The church is made up of imperfect people. We all fall short, and we all make mistakes, but that's an excuse when you say the church is full of hypocrites. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know, when I go to church, I feel judged. Let me say something that might surprise you. Maybe you need to be judged a little bit. Now let me explain, let me explain. Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. Every non-believer knows that verse. And they also know this verse, let him that is without sin cast the first stone, right? But what does it mean when Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged? Does it mean we should not make evaluations about people or situations? We should not make judgments of any kind? Well, it can't mean that. Because the Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. A literal translation of what Jesus said would be, condemn not lest you be condemned. So if you went to a church and you were condemned, that's wrong. And I apologize for that if that happened. But I'm saying if there's someone that loves you enough to say, I'm concerned about you spiritually, that is a true friend. Because the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. See, a true friend will stab you in the front, not the back. (laughs) Right? The Bible says, open rebuke is better than secret love. 
So we do need to be accountable to one another. I think this is one of the reasons people church hop. Because people get their number. Hey man, I, I see you're still doing this thing. Why are you done? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling called to another church. Reminds me of a story of a guy who was stranded on an island out in the middle of the ocean. They finally came and rescued him. Saw that he had three buildings that he had built. Three. And so they asked him, well, three buildings. What are these buildings? He says, well, the first building, that's my house. Okay. What are the other two buildings? Well, the next one, that's my church. Okay, your house, your church. What's the third building? He says, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> the church, a place to develop a consistent theology, a place to develop friendships, a place to grow together. Pastor Greg Laurie with important insights on the role the church should play in our daily lives. We're learning a lot from his new series on a new beginning called The Upside Down Life. It's based in the book of Acts in the Bible. Now, as important as it is to be part of a good church, it's not church membership that gets us into heaven. It's only through a relationship with Christ that we can know that we're going to heaven when this life is over. Do you have that assurance? Pastor Greg says it's just not a good idea to assume that everything's just going to work out okay. No, this is one area of your life you want to be sure about, where you're going to spend eternity. The Bible says, These things we write to you, that you may believe on the Son of God and that you may know that you have eternal life. Listen, I know I have eternal life. I know I'll go to heaven one day. And I hope that doesn't sound boastful. And if it does, I'm boasting on what God has done for me, not on what I've done for God. The reason I know these things is because I've turned from my sin and I've put my faith in Christ, you see. And if you do the same, you can have this same hope. You just need to call out to the Lord and admit you're a sinner and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and come into your life. The Bible says whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Will you call upon him right now? I'm going to pray a simple prayer, and I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer after me, if you would. So if you want to know that you'll go to heaven when you die, if you want to know for certain that Christ is living in your life, then pray this prayer with me. Just pray these words, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner, but I know you are the Savior who died on the cross for my sin. I turn from my sin now, and I choose to follow you from this moment forward as my Savior and my Lord, as my God and my friend. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you for answering this prayer. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you've just prayed that prayer with Pastor Greg and you've meant those words sincerely, the Lord has forgiven you of your sin, and you're now a Christian. And we want to help you get started in this new life of faith. Let us send you our New Believers Growth Pack. It's a collection of resources that will answer many of the questions that you might have and help you walk each day with God. Just call and ask for a New Believers Growth Pack on 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time on A New Beginning, more insight on how we need the church and the church needs us. More from our studies in the Book of Acts next time. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called Better Together. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 